Stan Jabalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV Whiskey One. Good vibrations. A little bit of a tip for you on how to get a good radio frequency ground if you happen to have a shack that's right by an outside window at the ground level of your house. And all of this and much more can be found in my book Ham and Shortwave Radio for the Electronics Hobbyist due out in October of 2014. I will include a link to the Amazon.com page for this book in the description of this video. But what I'd like to describe for you first is how do you get that feed line of yours out through a window? You don't want to drill a hole in the glass, do you? I, I don't think I've ever tried that. I don't think I'd ever want to try that. But it, a lot of the windows in many houses have this window frame that slides up and down in a glide track. Sometimes some of them s slide uh, left and right. But they slide along a track and you can close them and open them so that you don't crank them out and expose them to high winds and such, which uh, seem to be uh, rather prone to destruction in some of our recent weather events. Uh, so you have this thing, and I have a window just like this, uh, but it's on the upper floor of my house. Uh, not that that wouldn't work too, um, but the ground system I'm about to describe is intended for ground level systems. So here's your feed line, say your RG8U coax. You have a, a strip of wood, like a 2x2, two two, and you cut it to the same length as the window is wide, just so it'll fit right into that slot down in the window sash base and then you can slide that window down until it smacks against this wood and if the wood is just long enough to extend all the way across you'll get pretty good insulation and you can then drill a hole through that piece of wood that wood uh, block or wooden um, stick that you have obtained from your local lumber store and cut to the proper length you can do that with uh, antenna rotator cables and multiple feed lines and all sorts of things. You just have to make sure to drill the hole so that the cable will go through tightly, but not too tightly. And then don't put the connectors on the ends of the cable until you've run it through there. I've done that. Don't you just hate that? Don't you just curse yourself when you then you have to cut the connector off and start over? But once you've got that arrangement there, here's your rig, your radio, right inside this window. And here's your backyard, a typical residential backyard, might be 50 feet wide by 100 feet uh, long all the way to the back from your house. Uh, mine is probably about 70 feet here from the back of the house and about uh, 50 feet wide. The house doesn't go all the way across the property line, but pretty close. So if, you had, if I wanted to do this, say, in my living room, I could do it there. Uh, you run that um, cable out through the window like this and your ground wire and everything. Then you pound a ground rod a couple feet away from your house, right under the window, and you attach your ground wire there, keeping it as short as you can. And then from that ground rod, you run single so-called radial wires, one for each band that you intend to operate on, cut to a quarter of a wavelength. So on 10 meters, that would be about 8 feet. On 15 meters, shown here, that would be about 11 feet. Uh, 12 meters here, I guess that would be about 9.5 feet. 17 meters, I guess it would be about 13 feet. You'd have to calculate according to the formula for a quarter wavelength wire. 20 meters would be about 16 or 17 feet. And so on and so on. You just calculate the lengths and you run them out in whatever direction you want, but you try to use all of the di available directions. These serve as sort of ground enhancements. They help to provide a good radio frequency ground for your station and the ground rod then will provide some DC ground and also some RF ground. Uh, it's a marginal system, it's a marginal scheme. You, you, ideally you would have multiple radials for each band. but Now you might get challenged on 80 and 75 meters and you'd have to bend that radial 
like this. Same thing might even happen on the 5 megahertz or 60 meter band if your yard is rather small. You might have to you might have to bend it and it's okay to bend it that much. What you don't want to do is bend it back on itself. That you do not want to do and you want to avoid getting too much into bending it more than once. Uh, if you can make an arrangement like this <coughs> and you run your feed lines out like that then you can uh, use an end-fed uh, wire antenna, run it out that same window, another hole here, uh, or your feed line going up to your dipole antenna or your vertical or whatever, but you can get a good station radio frequency ground and help to minimize RF in the shack problems using a scheme like this. It won't completely get rid of it, but um, you can read all about this and related topics in this book when it comes out. Don't you just love that cover? I sure wouldn't want to be on the radio at a time like that, though. I'd be afraid of lightning. That's a whole nother topic, too. I have a great deal of respect for lightning here in the Black, Hill, Black Hills of South Dakota, where I live. Stan Gibalisco, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV from somewhere deep in outer space where a star has exploded, giving birth to all of the ingredients for a new solar system with new life forms for us to visit at some future time. Until next time, so long. <laughs>